attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning. New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap, Mr. Gilstrap. Good morning. Happy Thursday. You, John recently discovered the uh, WRNR app, which you can get in the TuneIn uh, it's through tune, tune the in tune, through tune, tune in, in yeah. app. The not, tune in app, but with, but you can you can access it off of you know Siri or or Alexa. Mm-hmm. But the cool thing about this is that I don't have to be watching on Facebook. I can wherever the you have the little echoes or uh, we're mm-hmm. we're Alexa people. You can listen to it anywhere. And that's but kinda, you don't that's get the neat. you don't. I didn't the, know that. You don't get the good commentary on that like you do on the Facebook. <laughs> well, that's true. You don't. You don't get the input from the listening audience. Yeah, which which, which shapes, sometimes actually deals with life. what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> which shapes a lot of our. Qu- I mean, I, I always look down there to see if there's any. I mean, they have a lot of good suggestions for yeah. topics and questions. Where else are you going to get Ken Matson's cynical approach to life? Ken Matson doesn't believe anything anybody says, ever, <laughs> ever. I've never, I've never read Ken uh, Ken Matson comment where Ken goes, "Oh yeah, I agree with that." Yeah, he, yeah, he's, he's he, right. yeah. he commented that it wasn't my mom's birthday today. <laughs> <laughs> Prove it. No, I'm kidding, Ken. Uh, our right, guest in this segment, Delegate Mike Cornby, also proprietor of this establishment. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, Matt and John. Good morning, sir. How are things at the Delta House? <laughs> Delta House is making waves. Let's just put it that way. Knowledge yeah. is good. Who, so who's all yep. who's all packed in under the Mike Height roof this year? So we got uh, Daryl Coles is back. Uh, Jimmy uh, Willis and Gino, myself and Height. So there's five of us. And of course, I have Crusher and my kids down here for all week since. I'm, I had school, so it's been really nice having my family with me this week. Has she been cooking for the entire house or just for you? She sure has. We've, we've had sausage egg biscuits in the morning. We had lasagna the other night. Um, yes. How big is the house? Yeah. That's a lot of people. It, it's three stories. Uh, I think it's seven bedrooms. Wowzers. It's one of them old, uh, old you know, built in the 20s or 50s. Um, so it. It's a nice house. How far from the so capital are you? About a half mile, maybe three quarters of a mile. So you're walking, and all of us drive our all of us drive our cars in. So it's, it's kind <laughs> well, of you're, four, four cars going in because we have different schedules. But your drivers um, drive you, right? I mean, you're a delegate. Oh, no, no, you we have, have staff. No drivers. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's hel- helicopters. One hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, first and foremost, uh, I want to ask you about the article I saw on the Metro News website today that said uh, pay raise bill uh, in regards to state employees is aimed more at trying to make their salaries competitive with surrounding states as opposed to the standard traditional 5% raise. What do you know about this? Yeah, so out of education we passed, and we, we strictly did this for teachers and for service personnel, two separate bills. Um, House Education has been studying this, uh, the House Education Committee, is, it, we ran the same bills last year. Um, it basically gives a $624 raise to every service personnel, and it basically gets them to the median income of our surrounding states. So it is it is not the 5% um, raise that the governor is proposing, but out of education, we, we, we've passed those two, um, those two bills. What's the difference between the governor's price tag and yours, Matt? Um, I, well, the governor's is for all state employees, so it includes uh, troopers and another, a bunch of other um, government employees. Our uh, price tag, I think, was $108 million. 108. So yours does not address competitive salaries for state employees, just teachers. No, state employees. it does not. We, well, yeah. Out of education, we're, we're addressing education issues. So mm-hmm. we we pass the uh, service personnel and teachers only. Uh, you tried to pass something like this last year, too, did you not? We did pass out of education the same, the exact same bill. Right. And it did not get any traction out of the committee, though, did it? It does not get traction. It'll, it'll, go, it'll go to finance. Uh, finance can discuss it. And then the governor's bill with, uh, you know, the 5% across the board will go. It just puts it in the conversation. We really feel that the starting salary of teachers needs to be raised. Um, so that was something that, for recruitment efforts, we really feel that if that piece of it can be considered in finance, then, then we're really getting somewhere. Okay. That's a Sounds like a reasonable plan. Well, I don't know if it yeah. goes anywhere this year, but I hope it does. 
Especially yeah, here. And then I had uh, then my first bill passed through education yesterday, too, which is the uh, uh, study resolution for the school aid format to take a look and redo all that. So they'll have a report for us first day of session next year all right. on, on what the study does. What other things out of education should we expect this year? Um, I think you're going to see um, I, I probably see teacher carry come out of education, and it might address some SRO funding um, t- tied with that. I think you're going to see I have a bill that allows uh, teachers to roll over their sick days. Um, tier 2 employees right now can't roll over their sick days, so they're basically forced to use up all their sick and personal time every year. Um, so I have a bill to you let them roll it over, um, which you know is more standard practice in my mind. And I think it also rolls it back to the way it was a couple of years ago. It was uh, it was uh, recently so the, changed. So there are tier, yeah. So people are grandfathered in. There's some people that are allowed to um, to do that, and I think we changed it. I think we're doing a disservice to new che- teachers by uh, by not letting them bank their sick and personal days. Uh, under the old system, when they bank those sick and personal days, does that give uh, extended benefits like in health insurance during retirement or is so it a check? I believe um, in the old system you could, let's say, bank them for X amount of time and then you could actually put it towards your retirement. You could put it towards uh, health care or health insurance at the end of your, your tenure. So there was a lot of benefits to that. Um, and my bill doesn't address all that it kind of keeps it simple to start with and says let's let them roll it over and then we can address some things uh, as far as uh, um, retirement and, and you know things like that is there a limit to the proposed rollover I have, I kept it stupid simple John um, I made it no limit no it, it's the bill is basically about nine lines um, I found it it's a lot easier to pass simple bills down here um and so it if just, you if, if you don't take a lot of sick leave early in your career you can take the last year off and call it sick yeah leave. yeah i mean if that's what you want to do would but then yeah, and, and would i you, think if you're I not in committee if you do and, that but what do you a, accru- accumulate more sick time and vacation time oh Ultimately. you could but oh, for me it's like it, a perpetual for me it's like hey w- they're taking the sick time anyway. We have to get uh, a sub into the uh, the classroom when they're taking it. Uh, we're basically forcing them to take sick time, um, and I don't think that's right. But doesn't it, not to get into the weeds on, on this, but isn't there a short-term disability element that kicks in after like two weeks or ten days or something like that with, anyway, it's, it's um, okay, let's, I have a quite. what are you, are you aware, I'm just reading through, um, the news here. There's an effort from the uh, Republican Party Executive Committee that's meeting in, in Charleston that uh, to close Republican primaries to independents to make it only, f- and that would affect the one that's coming up in May. To yeah, um, I think they vote on it this Saturday at the uh, what are your thoughts meeting? So I think it's a mistake, John, and and and, and the reason I say that is if you remember when we were in the minority, the uh, Democrats did the same thing. And I think our, the, the way it's worked for us is, has been good for Republicans across the state. We took the majority. Um, and I, I remember back when the Democrats did that, that's when the pendulum started swinging to the Republicans. And I don't want that to happen in West Virginia, personally. What is so the I, argument I in mistake. favor of doing it? It doesn't make sense to me at, at its face. I, I, I'm not in those conversations. I'm not part of the executive committee. I don't really uh, attend the state functions like that. I just saw the news, and me personally, the I, think arg- it's a, I think it's a mistake. Yeah. The argument for it is that you're having non-Republicans decide who the Republican candidate should be. That is very true. But um, we can also swing too far too well in my opinion if you think about what the party principle is and the nomination process it's here's our party let's get together and nominate our candidate to be a person who nominates someone from our party you have to be a member of our party 
If yep. not, then we could just have anybody come in and nominate whoever they want to represent us, and they're not in our party. But so, John, so why would you want people who are not in your party determining who your party nominates? Because a third of the electorate well, then, is, that's, is but that's not But that's not the deal. So not there's, how, there's, The there's, parties there's, nominate their candidates. I, Make I, your own party then. But it's about 25% if, if, in West Virginia. If I'm an independent... I can see the, the logic going, well, if the nominee is this guy, then I'll be a Republican. If it's that guy, then I will vote Democrat because I don't like that other guy. So I, th I think it's about wooing the independent vote. But that's not how the party principle so, works. Okay. I, I don't but, but think it's about wooing independent any vote. independent vote at all. I, it, I think it's more about, you know, for, for me, I'm a, I'm a Republican, but I don't belong to the Berkeley County Republican Club. I don't answer to them. I answer to 18,000 constituents back home. So when you're the minority party in West Virginia, you, as when the Republicans were the minority party, you, you wanted to woo and court that vote because with, you get them used to checking that R and then in the general election, you, was, you were trying to bring along the independents. That's, and I, th I think Matt makes a good point. There. And, now, and now it's like, okay, thanks for helping us get here. We're going to we're going to kick you out of the club. Uh, you know, I mean, there's there's really good arguments on both sides of this. Uh -huh. However, if you registered as an independent and you know what the party structure and the system is, that's a choice that you made. And there are there are consequences for those actions. And the consequence is that Absolutely. in most states you can't vote in a primary. Everybody understands that going in. If you want to vote in a primary, then you have to re you should have to register as a member of the party that you're trying to vote for. So if if of course the Democrats at this point wouldn't close theirs. So basically, you would be voting if you were independent. You could vote for uh, judicial races and nonpartisan races and Democrats. So in West Virginia, this registering as one party or the other is new to me. That's not how it was done in my previous state. So does one register as an independent, or does one is an independent one who is not registered as either Democrat or Republican? In West Virginia, you can register as an independent, but you can also register as non-affiliated. So I don't belong. To, so Joe Blow does not belong to any party, so or does not affiliate with anybody. So he can say I'm non-affiliated because independent is an actual uh, box on, that you can register as. And is non-affiliated closed out of all primaries? Well, you can run as a Republican if you want. If you were a non-affiliated affiliated registered voter so if I was a non-affiliated voter I could run as a Republican if I wanted to if I registered with the party the day I, the, the day I uh, put my my paperwork in Delegate Michael so, Hunter, and I, I have seen a I have seen a law or a bill that came across my desk that is actually I think we we're we're addressing that it's probably on uh, first reading or it's in committee um that is going to make a you can't let's say if you let's talk about the doug scaff situation you can't be a, a democrat then switch to a republican and run for office so I, I know that is a bill coming across uh this year too do you have a sense of if this resolution will pass which resolution Ab about closing the I have no idea. It's going to be down at uh, the Republican uh, convention or whatever it is. Uh, I don't even know where it is. I think it's Saturday. They're voting for it. Would kick in in 26, by the way. Yeah, but I, I think they're voting for the body of all the different Republican clubs will be voting um, this Saturday, I believe. And, and this wouldn't take legislation, correct? It's just... No, no, this is a party choice. Party can yeah. choose. I don't know why you would want to be in a party that allows someone not from your party to nominate your candidate that doesn't make any sense to me hey i want to ask you about uh, the ag and natural resources committee uh, we had a conversation yesterday with senator barrett and bill stubblefield was talking about farmland protection and uh, some of the other ways of trying to preserve land in west virginia there's a bill uh, that would curtail the limit at 25 years for this uh, protection mike what are your thoughts on this have you seen the bill, Rob? I've not personally read it. I'm going by our discussion so yesterday. I have, I, have, I have not seen a bill um, or a bill number yet. Um, I've heard um, rumors of a bill coming through the Senate. Mm -hmm. um, I would be 100% opposed to changing anything with farmland protection. Um, I believe we, we are losing so many farms across this country, and we need to protect those farms because, you know, 
no farms, no food. Um, and I don't want to be relying on any other country for food. Um, if you look at the Eastern Panhandle, we're losing a lot of orchards. We're losing a lot to development. Um, I, I, I moved to West Virginia because I like the country aspect of it. Um, I, I don't want to feel like I live in Richmond. The idea of being that uh, 25 years from now, there may be a change in the need for the use of that land or what have you, and this would give you the opportunity to review it as opposed to there not being any discussion at all, Mike. Well, I think, you know, and that's why the Economic Development sits on a Farmland Protection Board. I think those kind of things should be looked at when you are putting a piece of property into farmland protection. So let's say... You know, we've got uh, Procter and Gamble. We got the, the, the Procter and Gamble site, and you've got all that development there. Let's say there's a nice big farm next to it, and they want to put it into farmland protection. I think we could have input and say, you know what, we're kind of hoping to put water, sewer, electric, a gas pipeline. All those things need to be discussed beforehand. Um, and I, I think it's you, you can get easements. You can have all kinds of discussions to to do that. But in, in the end, if it's a voluntary program. If I own the land and I'm choosing to um, put it into farmland protection, I should have that right. Is home rule going to get any traction for counties in this session, Mike? So um, I don't. There is. I've seen a couple of bills, and Height and I have uh, have one that we're working on um, that addresses giving. Giving some some leeway to the county council, but I, I think Height and I are on the same page here. We want to make sure it goes to referendum. If if if, if it was something we were running, um, we would make sure the people get to vote. I, I don't like the idea of raising taxes or giving the county uh, county commissioners the ability to raise taxes without the people's input. Mr. Gilstrap. There's been a rumbling I've heard in various news reports and actually in, in talking with Senator Blair here of reenacting or restating capital punishment in West Virginia, specifically in the case of Senator Blair, he, he pushing for um, capital punishment for those who who deal in, in fentanyl and another is for the killing of a police officer. Any is does any thoughts on that? Is there any movement on such a bill to bring back capital punishment in West Virginia? I haven't seen um, anything from the Senate. Uh, obviously, nothing's come through the House yet. I know we we do have something addressing, um, you know, vehicular homicide. We have, um, you know, life imprisonment. I think Gino's got a bill for life imprisonment for uh, for drug dealers and fentanyl dealers. Um, I'm still on the fence on on Craig's idea. Uh, I'm pro life, and I just think it costs too much to to. Do capital punishment. Um, it seems to be a revolving door of lawsuits and appeals and, and things like that. So until I actually see a bill, I can't really comment on, on that, John. Well, the Soviet Union had a very effective and efficient <laughs> capital punishment <laughs> bill. <laughs> Walk down the hall and bang, and it's... it's we could just uh, yeah, go back to those days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I've lived in a communist country before, uh, <laughs> in a socialist country, and I, I, don't, I certainly don't want to go back to, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Is uh, is Matt Harvey getting any traction on his uh, hopes to strengthen the vehicular manslaughter laws in this? Uh, I state? think we're going to pass that. What will what will the I new law seen, read? I haven't seen the House version. I I worked on the Senate version for the last two years. Yep, I, I think we've got something coming out of the House. Tom Fast is our new uh, House Judiciary um, Chair, and uh, I think you're going to I think you're going to see a lot of things. They're, they've been working hard. They took up bills uh, what the second day, and they've been running. Um, running a lot of bills so i i'll just point this out about that with you know larry i will delegate comp excuse me yeah. was, was on here talking about how he run that bill and and the the really tragic thing about that is he and i've never talked about it he's he's dealing he has was approached by family members that in berkeley county that had suffered through what the family members in jefferson county so we're we're there was an impetus to change that law from another source other than the the, the tragic events mm -hmm. that have happened in Jefferson County, and I think, oh, and I know there's other I across think. the state, and, I've, and it's just, it's it's awful. I, I think it's got the support, especially in the House. Um, I think that one um, is going to be one of the, the the early ones to get get to the floor. And we, Matt or 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 uh, Mike, where would 
vehicular homicide be in the hierarchy of homicide? You know, you've, you've got first degree murder and then you've got, you know, whatever else the, the tiers are. It would be on the lower. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. It would be on yeah, the yeah. lower side. Yeah, I don't know what the, again, I don't know what the house's version says. I'm not says. a lawyer, so the, the, the folks on judish they got a bunch of lawyers. I haven't um, well, it hasn't come across my desk. It hasn't come to the floor. I, I, I usually try and I can't read every single bill that's out there. I usually try and read the ones that have passed in committee and they're heading to the floor. And then I read them. I, I do know prior uh, it's probably December uh, or November. House Judiciary's legal counsel reached out to me, and we we had some really good discussions. So yeah. I'm. I say that I haven't seen the House's bill, but I, you know, I spoke with legal counsel, so I feel good that it's. I know this is a passion project for you, Matt. Have, have you been lobbying for this? I know that you've been pushing for it, but are you reaching out to individual delegates and senators to yeah. to pull for this? So this will be year three, and uh, this That's pretty this, fast, though, isn't it? I mean, in the. Not if you're the, not if you lost not a lot. Well, no, 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 obviously, part, but in yeah. terms of getting a new law implemented. I, I, maybe I, it, it doesn't no, feel I, fast. I think Matt's right. I'll speak for Matt. It's taken too long. Okay. Thank you. I, I, yeah. And I'll be down. And by the way, I'll be at the Capitol Monday. So oh, excellent. Look forward to seeing you, Matt Harvey. What would the uh, ideal new law read like in regards to a reasonable punishment? So if you look at DUI with death. That's a three to fifteen. So if I, I see, I see this on par with that. But really, as long as it elevates it to a felony, um, and and increases the penalty from essentially what is at worst six months in jail, then yeah, you know, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push too hard on the penalty beyond getting it to a felony level and getting mm -hmm. some teeth behind it. Because right now, it. if I if I decide I don't want to wait behind a school bus and I decide to pass it and I kill a six-year-old, I might do six months to a year? If you're drag like let's just use drag racing because... Drag racing is more of a... It, yeah. it is, and you're, you and your, your friends are racing against each other and you're going 120 miles an hour down Route 9 and you slam into that school bus and you kill eight kids on that school bus, then you get eight misdemeanors. Hmm. Uh, Mike, uh, before you go, uh, quickly, how, not sure how closely you've been following Wayne's uh, bills in regards to wineries and such. Uh, yeah, I'm on economic development. Oh, well, uh, that's true, you are. So uh, yep. how confident are you are that some of these bills will be passed this year? Um, I think his dual, uh, dual licensing uh, bill, I think, is a really good shot. It depends. Here's the thing. It's going to depend if it gets um, referred to judiciary. If it gets referred to judiciary, I, I you know, I, I don't know how much leeway the chair has there to run bills or not run bills, but I know Tom Fast, uh, he does not like booze bills or booze freedom. It's just the way he is. He, he, he's pretty open about that. Um, we will see. If it, if it gets referenced to judiciary, it's going to be very hard. If it gets referenced to the floor, I think it'll pass. The farm winery, I have some concerns. Um, still but i haven't read the actual bill i did um i saw the draft and i've been working with wayne on, on these things i think they both have a, a real good shot with his uh, momentum behind it all right very good mike thank you anything else you need to bring to our attention before you go no um you should see a bunch of our bills start running here soon i, I know we've got uh we've got some good stuff for berkeley county so oh like what well, you didn't ask, so. Well, go ahead and go. <laughs> he just did. I just asked now. I don't have enough time to. <laughs> well, no, um, take a minute or two. Once, once we get it, uh, I'm thinking I'm on with you every week. Uh, once we get it to uh, committee and things like that, we can talk in, in more uh, detail. All right. Have a good day. All right. So talk to you next Thank Thursday. Thank you, sir.